I'd like to um, welcome Dr. Susan Day to the stage. There couldn't be someone more appropriate than Dr. Day to discuss work-life balance and her experience. She is currently the Vice President of Medical Affairs of ACGME International. She previously worked in private practice as a pediatric ophthalmologist at California Pacific Medical Center, where she was most recently the chair, one of very few female chairs in ophthalmology, chairwoman. And she was a program director uh, at the uh, Department of Ophthalmology as well. You may also remember her because she served as president of the academy in 2005 and has had numerous leadership positions in the academy and AUPO. Let's welcome Dr. Day. If is this on? I just need some help getting the mic on. Yeah, it's it's not live yet. So could someone help me? Is that working now? Oh yeah. Cool. Great. Well, thank you. Um, I envy you anyway because you've got a career in front of you. I don't envy you in a way because um, it's nice to, to be able to reflect on, on what's occurred. Um, many of the talks have been about what you're going to be doing for and to your patients. And this shift now in the program, still not working? That's okay. All right. This shift in the program is, you know, about yourself not in a selfish way, but in a whole way, so that in turn you can serve others and uh, appreciate the beauty of life. So these lessons learned are just sort of my vignettes. I used to be asked to talk about strabismus or how to run an apartment, and this is kind of what I'm, I'm down to now. So, um, Several of you have mentioned the word marathon. Um, a career is a marathon. It's not a sprint. For so many years, you've been looking at things, what do I need to do to get into med school? What do I need to do to get a residency at a place I want? And now you're at a point where you are setting the standard, and you are the ones that will be looking at how your career unfolds. And just like a marathon, you have to pace yourself. It's not a sprint. Don't expect everything to fall in your lap from the first day you go into practice. In fact, one of the most difficult parts about transitioning from being a fellow or a resident to being a practitioner is that this great funnel that has occurred of interesting patients goes away and those refractions that you thought were mundane as a resident become your bread and butter. So take care of yourself and know that many of your first jobs won't work out. Why? Sometimes it's mismatch. Very often it's because you change what your needs are or what the development is in your career. And don't worry if the direction changes, but embrace it. Uh, endurance is key. Remember that w your goal of taking care of patients and of taking care of yourself is foremost in this marathon. Point number two, say yes to opportunities. Uh, you've said yes to a lot in life, and sometimes you won't feel like saying yes to serve on a committee or yes to going to an evening meeting, but very often when you say yes, there will be things that unfold that you never would have dreamed would have happened. There are so many opportunities to serve, and that could be in your practice, in your hospital. Don't forget the rest of medicine. Serve on the medical communities in your hospitals. It's really important for the sake of yourself, your own practice, but also for the sake of how others in medicine, view ophthalmology. Say yes if someone says, would you like to go on an international trip? This will open up things that you never, ever would have seen in your life if you had stayed put. Remember that people who say yes really are the ones that benefit. Um, how many of you have had a professor in your life that really was a volunteer? 
And when the residents gave that person a teaching award, the, the joy that that person feels in receiving that, saying yes brings so much. And I would encourage you to do that. Number three, follow your passion. Everyone has a passion. That may be uh, honing surgical skills, it may be teaching, it may be writing papers, it may be something entirely different. But you will do better in your career if what you do and what you emphasize in addition to caring for patients is something that really is a passion for you. And that passion need not just be limited to what you do in your workaday life, but also in your avocational life. And if art is your thing, or music, or sports, don't let those valuable parts of you be tossed away because you get busy doing other things. And as your careers evolve, these passions will surface perhaps in other career opportunities. I have certainly found that. I love education, and it has completely changed my life in the past year to morph into an entirely new career simply because education was important to me. Number four, see the good around you. If you want to think that the world is cheating you or that reimbursements are terrible or whatever the negatives are, you're going to prove that that's right. But if you see the positive of taking care of your patients, of inventing new ways of doing things better, of traveling to help people internationally, that's what's going to be present when you're starting to think about retirement. Always think positively, always think the good, and that good will come to you, I promise you. Number five, develop more than your vocation. you got to be well-rounded. That's how you ended up in medical school. That's how you were selected to be a resident in ophthalmology. That's how you were found to be a good person when somebody was offering you a job. And once again, the balance works when you do more than just be in practice. It might be running marathons. It might be coaching a little league team. It might be taking part in a PTA. Whatever it is, understand that others see how you act, and it'll make you so much happier if you do these other things. Beauty is restored. Number six, look in the mirror. We often fail to do this. And um, I would urge each one of you to periodically take out that mission statement you wrote, or the personal statement when you wanted to go in ophthalmology. I bet bottom dollar you said something about taking care of patients, doing research, teaching, and maybe global opportunities. Well, that's great, but keep doing that. Understand if you're not doing it, why you're not doing it, and it's, it's okay. But look at your personal statements, and I think it'll keep you grounded to your career. As a marathon, define the long-range goals. And if your goal is to uh, be a researcher, continue to understand that it's going to take a while to get to a Nobel Prize or something perhaps less glorious, but equally important. Remember that everybody has talents, and just as this baby warthog wouldn't exactly be the epitome of what we would call beauty, that mama warthog thinks it's the prettiest baby in the world. So whatever it is you have, even if it's a warthog sort of uh, uh, attribute, by gosh, that's an important part of life and to others. And then finally, use your time, your treasure, and your talents because that's what you have. And I'm going to point my finger, just like this statue is pointing a finger. It's your turn to decide what you're going to be. You don't have to get into school again. You don't have to get a residency again. It's your turn, and what you make of it, you'll reap the rewards. So have at it. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Day.